What's up guys and welcome to the second video in the Programming Connect4 in Python series. At the end of the last video we had something that looked like this. It's just a simple command line based Connect4 game. And the one problem with this is that if I actually won this game, so as you can see I just won with player 1 down the bottom, the game doesn't let me know at all that I won. So we need to implement that functionality. So we're going to define a function called winning move and we're going to have that take in the board and then the last piece that was dropped. So winning move, there's a bunch of different ways to implement this and the way we're going to do is not the most efficient method but it's probably the easiest to describe in a video so that's kind of why I'm selecting it but we're going to manually check all the different possible places you could win in Connect4. So all the horizontals, all the verticals, and all the diagonals. And check to see uh, if there is a winning combination on the board. And because we're doing this after every turn, we're going to pick up the first instance of that winning combination so we'll know who won. Um, probably the more practical way would be to just check around the spaces where the last piece was dropped. But that code got a little bit messier when I was doing it before, so I'm going to just do it this way. So we're going to first check all of the horizontal locations. And to do that, we'll have a loop that iterates over the columns. So for C in col range column count. And so we defined a column count up here above, and that's 7. And one thing uh, I think would be a cool challenge for you guys to try that I don't think my game is going to be able to do at this point in time is a very well designed like Connect4 game. You would be able to change these numbers. So like I could change it to say like 12 or something and this to like 8. And the game would still be able to work. You still have like a Connect4 game but just a bigger board. And so that's like kind of a cool way to make sure like you've designed things in a smart way where you don't have just these random like magic numbers popping up all over the place. And I'm actually going to change this real quick to row count and column count. Just because I'm going to try to eliminate the magic numbers where I can. And we'll clean this up to uh, row count minus one. So this is the last row, the index of the last row. Okay, getting back to winning move. So we want to check horizontal locations for the win. So we're going to first loop over all of the columns, and then we're also going to have a loop over all of the rows. And what this loop is going to be over is not every single position, but over all of the possible starting positions for a horizontal win. So if we think about our board, a horizontal win can start this spot, this spot, this spot, and this spot. It can't start here because you can't go four over from this uh, location. So this is our last column, the third column uh, in terms of indices. And then upwards, we can go all the way to the top vertically because it can. So this half, uh, sorry, you can't really see, but where I'm making a, a box around, that half is where our starting locations can be for this first. Um, this first check. So we're iterating over the columns so it can only be the number of columns and then we have to subtract three because three of those columns couldn't actually work. So we're subtracting three off of that one and then all the rows could work so that's totally fine. So now we're going to check all of the four in a row locations. So this is going to look like something like this. So if board row column, so this is just indexing the matrix, equals equals piece, and board row C plus 1, so this is taking the next one to the right, so we're checking horizontally, so we're only changing the columns, equals equals piece, and board R C plus 2 equals equals piece, then finally, and board, this is the fourth piece in a row, board C plus 3 equals equals piece. Then we're going to return true. 
So we want to return true the first time this happens. We're not going to return this expression because that would return that would break out of this loop before we wanted it to. Okay, and so what, right right again, this is not the mo the best way probably to write it. You know, we have these magic numbers popping up, but it's just a very simple way to check for all those horizontal locations, all right? So let's do the same thing with vertical locations locations for when and actually before I do that let's just uh, check to see if we can get some functionality on this so if valid location and we're gonna also write a, a if statement that says if winning move and so we're gonna say board and then the piece is one so if it's winning move, we're gonna just print out uh, player one wins. Congrats, yay. Okay, let's just see if that works with the horizontal real quick. And then we're also gonna wanna set this game over variable uh, to true. Because the game is in fact over if the move is winning. So let's just run that real quick. Python run current file. Okay, player one make your selection three. Yay, it says player one wins. And we I guess accidentally printed the board out one extra time. But you know, we did get that functionality. It did check that horizontal win. So I think that looks good. Obviously, um you don't want to test these like very thoroughly. But for the sake of the time of this video, I'm going to just start going to the horizontal, the vertical location. So if we think about where vertical locations can start, um, it can start, we need four up. So it can start, it's pretty much the opposite of the, ver the horizontal. So vertical could start all of this bottom section because we need four up, but it can be in any column. So it's going to be pretty similar to the last loop. But we're going to have to change the row. Um, so you'll see in a sec. Shift tab, shift key. We're going to have to change. Instead of the column count doing uh, for C and column count minus three, we're going to have to do row count minus three because we can't start at the top row. And then we're going to have to add these pluses to the rows, actually. Row plus one row plus two and the last one is row plus three and, and right, once again like see if you could figure out how to manipulate this um, these equations to work for uh, any length of a board and also let's say maybe we wanted to make a game that was like connect six like it'd be a cool challenge for you guys to try to build these functions so that they could be any um, number of columns, any number of rows, and any number of pieces for the winning length. Okay, so let's check to see if the vertical locations now work. We're going to run this again real quick. So tools, Python, and current file, three. Cool, it, it works again. So we see you have the four in a row with the ones right here, and it says player one wins. Congrats. So that looks good. Uh, now we have to get to the little bit of the trickier um, things. We're going to have to check for the – first we'll check for the positively sloped diagonals. And we're also going to make a separate method to check for the negatively sloped. And you'll see why we need to do this in a sec diagonals all right so let's think about it we're gonna think about it the same way where are our possible starting locations that we could have a positively sloped diagonal well we can start here and go up we can start here and go up here and go up so I think the last piece we can start here and go up so this is gonna be the top row and we can't go any farther than this piece right here so that looks like we're doing row count minus three and column count minus three. So, right. So we're gonna, we'll just copy this code. 
Let's see. Oh no, what happened? Let's see, and I'll paste that in right here. All right, so we're gonna have to subtract three from column count and from row count. And then how this is gonna increment is you start with that initial starting location, and then we need to plus one to both things because it's a slope. It's not just a horizontal or vertical now. So we have to do the addition step for both of these. Okay, cool. And as we've been doing, let's just check to see if we can get a diagonal win here. So player one make your selection. I'll just start in the Right, we're almost there. Uh, so close. Don't screw this up now, Keith. Okay, and we'll check here. Cool, the diagonal there worked. So that looks like it's working too. And then finally we need to do the negatively sloped diagonals. And so if we think about negatively sloped diagonals, they can start at the top and go downwards, but they couldn't start any lower than this right here. Or this is the t the last one they could start at because they have to go down four. So that looks like it would be the top rows, and then also the columns minus three. So we're gonna start the rows at three, and we're gonna have to start the columns in the normal normal location. So this is going to start from 3 to the row count. And so it's 3 because, if you think about it, z this is the zeroth row. This is the first row, second row, third row. So even though it's actually the fourth up, it's third index. So that's why we're starting at 3. And that's going to go all the way to the top. And the column count is actually good as it is. And so this is going to have to now go, it's going to go, positively over in the column direction, but it's going to go down a row. So negative one here, negative two here. And this is just a negative slope. You you know, you have one direction, positive one direction, negative. And this will be negative three. So let's test to see if this works. Come on. RPO, Python, and file. Okay. We'll just build up the left side first. Okay, two. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. We're almost to the negative diagonal there. So player one, you can go three. And then player two, we'll go two and two. Cool, the negative diagonals work now too. Okay, so that looks like we have all the possible winning directions. You should more thoroughly test to make sure the all the edge cases work, but to me that looks pretty good. So we're also going to implement the functionality for player two in this main game loop. Okay, so this is player two. Player two wins, congrats, game over, true. Okay, and if you wanted to, you could just break out of the, the loop um, if you didn't want to see this board and the turns changing at the end. Okay, so that's, we've now finished the command line version of the game. So we'll start building out, probably in the next video, we might clean up the code a little bit and then we'll build out the graphics. Okay, see you in a bit.